Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, free site, uh, bettingangle.us, a free site. Today is February the 18th, 2020. Let's talk boxing. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, I sometimes get asked how long I spend analyzing fights, right? You know, sometimes the minute a fight is made, I know who I want to go with. So the purpose of this video is to talk about three guys who are very highly respected, highly regarded in the sport of boxing, who I would bet against if they fight certain opponents based on what I've seen. So, Leo Santa Cruz, he's interesting. He was beaten once by Carl Frampton, who was more precise than he was, right? Precision, in my mind, beats volume. Well, Santa Cruz has been on a tear. He avenged that loss. He's been in the limelight. He's been a champion for years. But based on what I saw in a recent fight, right? Gary Russell Jr. versus King Tug Nyambar, right? I would certainly take King Tug, the guy who lost to Gary Russell, over Santa Cruz, right? I just feel that Tug is more precise than Santa Cruz. I think Santa Cruz comes out and he's trying to engage you. He opens up. That leaves him open for the kind of counters that a King Tug throws. Right? King Tug has an excellent straight right hand. He also is a guy who is mentally tough. He, he would try to walk you down. Right? Even though King Tug does not have a belt right now, I would take him over Leo Santa Cruz, who I feel is not going to age well. These volume blood and guts fighters, in my opinion, don't age well, right? Because sooner or later, you're not going to be able to get the car in fourth gear, outwork the other guy, right? And I just feel that a technician someone who is more precise, who has defensive skills, um, who can bend his knees. I want people to revisit that King Tug, Gary Russell fight. Tug is so advanced that Tug is standing in front of Russell. He keeps his construct, but to get lower, he bends his knees. He's not even bending at the waist, folks. He bends his knees and keeps his balance. The reason he lost to Gary Russell, simply put, is that Russell is one of the best fighters in the sport. Right? But make no mistake, if Leo Santa Cruz signs to fight Niam Bayar, right? I'm going to be with the underdog. I think King Tug would be a live underdog in that fight. Let's talk about another fight. You heard me mention Gary Russell's name. Gary's been calling out Gervonta Davis. Now, Davis has proved me wrong in fights before, right? I look at Davis and, you know, I see some holes. Gifted puncher, no question about it, right? He's certainly a puncher, but I get the feeling he could be outboxed by a guy who knows distance. There are times in that Nyambiar. Gary Russell fight, where Russell, who knows he's fighting a heavy-handed opponent, allows King Tug to throw bombs. And Russell, who has some of the fastest hands in the sport, stands there outside with complete confidence and faith that he's judged the distance of the punch the right way. And you'll notice the punch ends here. Right? Russell is a spacing master. Let's also face it, too. Gervonta Davis does not have the hand speed 
of Gary Russell. He just does it. So you have a situation where, right, Russell I also think is more precise than Gravante Davis. So you have a situation where I get the feeling that Russell is the better athlete. He just went 12 rounds with King Tub, very tough opponent. I get the feeling that Russell can come in, Russell has a good jab, Russell can stay outside, Russell can pop him with a jab from outside. If volume becomes an issue, Russell can come in and flash his hands, right? Davis can't throw combinations like Gary Russell. But I'll agree, this has a little bit of a Deontay Wilder, Tyson Fury flavor to it. We've seen fights where Gravante Davis lands that big shot and takes out an opponent, right? Russell would have to be on his game for 12 rounds, right? He would have to be able to survive for 12 rounds. If he does, for me, it's a foregone conclusion that Russell gets the decision. Let me also say too, when you fight a guy with hand speed, and you're unprepared for it because it's so unique you can't even find a sparring partner who has this kind of hand speed. You're gonna lose the early rounds. So understand, just like in the King Tug fight where Gary Russell jumped out to a big lead, threw a lot of hand speed, right? King Tug makes adjustments, but it took Tug a number of rounds before he started winning rounds. I get the feeling Gary Russell against Gravante Davis would start the same way. And Russell, who is comfortable with his back up against the ropes. You'll notice in that King Tug fight, King Tug relentlessly cuts off the ring on Russell. Russell's just a vet, right? Early 30s. Has been around for years, has had the belt for five years. Russell's a vet who, when a slugger, has cut off the ring on him and he has the ropes. Russell is calm because he knows he has another escape hatch, right? Russell doesn't allow himself to get backed into corners, but he allows himself to get backed up against the ropes where he can just move away. I don't get the feeling that Davis would be able to corner him like Davis has cornered so many. So that's another fight where I would expect Davis, because of his highlights, <clears throat> a lot of knockouts, because Russell only fights once a year, right? Because Russell outside the ring, you hardly hear about him. Davis outside the ring, he's in the news, sometimes for good reasons, sometimes for not so good reasons. I get the feeling Las Vegas would make Gary Russell the underdog in that fight, and I think that represents compelling value. Let's talk about one more fight. Now, you just saw Caleb Plant put on a clinic against a very heavy-handed opponent, right? One of the secrets to Caleb Plant, and I'm just guessing this based on looking at his fights, and it's remarkable, is that even though Plant moves extremely well, I believe, like Marvin Hagler, Plant is inverted. By that I mean, I believe Plant is really a lefty. Now, I have no evidence of this. This is just a guess based on looking at films. But I think that Plant is a lefty fighting out of an orthodox stance. So that lead left hook is his dominant hand. By the way, Oscar De La Hoya fought his entire career like this. Right, that 45 he threw was with his dominant hand. I get the feeling Caleb Plant, the left hook he throws, that's his dominant hand. When he throws a combination with one hand, that's how good he is. Throws a left hook up top, comes back, left hook uppercut and stuff like that. Those are heavier punches than it seems because if you don't realize that he's inverted, you think that's his off hand. You think this is a righty using his left hand. I get the feeling he's a lefty fighting in a righty stance. Well, I'll just say this. I'm looking at a surefire boxing hall of famer, Saul Alvarez, right? He's defying gravity a bit too much. Understand, when you go to 
175, which is what he did. And you still look cut up. In other words, Canelo didn't look like he was carrying extra weight at 175 at light heavy. Right? Canelo looked like he was in shape. I have a hard time believing that Canelo is now going to be able to turn around. Understand, he's no longer 19. He's late 20s now. Right? world is different. The world is different. Your body is different. I'm a skeptic on Canelo's ability, and I know he pulled it off in dropping down from 168 to 160. Right? Um, after the Rocky fight. But, you know, the idea of Canelo dropping from 175 to 168 to face a mover like Caleb Plant, who is much faster. Folks, Plant is quick twitch. Right? He is quick twitch. He's much faster handed than Canelo, even though Canelo himself is explosive in throwing punches. So I get the feeling Plant would be able to avoid Canelo's left hook. We just saw a fight that was closer, in my opinion, than widely reported. Right? The Kovalev Canelo fight, where Canelo had a problem with Kovalev moving. Right? That fight makes it into the later rounds. Kovalev wins several rounds. Well, understand, Kovalev doesn't move remotely as well, can't handle his back foot as well, doesn't have anything close to the hand speed of Caleb Plant. Right? Put me among those who, if Canelo signs to fight Caleb Plant at 168 pounds, Plant's division, seven pounds less than Canelo's fight against Kovalev. Right? And understand, too, Canelo has been fighting a lot of older guys. Let's just call it as it is. How old is Kovalev? How old is Danny Jacobs? I'm not saying these guys aren't great fighters. But how old is Golovkin? Right? If he hops back in the ring with a young lion in his prime, a champion who's a better mover, who's big for 168, who's coming at him inverted with his dominant hand up front. It's an open question right now, folks, on who has the better left hook, Canelo or Caleb Plant. Well, you and I know Canelo, because of a Hall of Fame career, because of devastating results in recent fights, folks, he just stopped the light heavyweight champion. Canelo probably is going to be favored against Caleb Plant. That's another value play for me. I would be on the Plant side of the equation. So, in the intro to this video, I said I was going to call out big names. I was going to challenge them. And I was going to give names of guys who I would take against them. Well, the big names I'm calling out are Leo Santa Cruz. Gervonta Davis, Saul Alvarez. Folks, all three have been champions. Right? All three have been in multiple championship fights. <clears throat> in today's boxing game, all three, in my opinion, are at risk. King Tug, silver medalist in the Olympics, boxing savant, silver medalist in the world championships as a teenager right Gary Russell has been champ for five years folks of all the guys I've named I think Russell today has faster hands than Caleb Plant I think Caleb Plant has very fast hands right Plant's nickname is sweet hands <laughs> right Gary Russell that hand speed oh oh man and let me just say this 168 seems congested. It seems congested. I think the best at 168 is Caleb Plant. I'll take my chances if he fights. Future Hall of Famer Saul Alvarez, I'll take 
planned. Let's hope one of these fights happen so we can talk about actual results and not speculation. But just understand, the great fighters in this sport have serious competition. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.